Hi, everybody. Welcome back to In Focus now on this Friday. Now, joining us in our next segment is Larry Gluck, the author of Talent Myth and founder of Mission Renaissance Fine Art Classes. And also joining us right now is Jasmine Zenitar. Why don't you tell us about the Mission Renaissance? Mission Renaissance started in 1975 by Larry Gluck, and the purpose was to bring back the lost fundamentals of fine art that were no longer being taught in schools. So after the advent of the modern movement, you can agree with me, the arts changed drastically, and that's what was the need, and that's how Mission Renaissance was born. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, there's a lot of different art schools that are in Southern California. What makes this one different from the other schools around the area? Well, we take people who want to learn the skills. We're not talking creative now. We're talking talent. And so what we do is we help them to acquire the talents. So if you, for instance, I, uh, uh, I think I've heard you state at one point that you didn't have any talent in this area. She's, I don't go beyond she's stick people. Stick figure you could you. learn <laughs> to draw and paint, and we could teach you to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what makes us different. Mm -hmm. Wow. Not just a little bit, but we could teach you so that you could become, if you wanted to, a professional painter. So it's not just talent that you have. You can actually teach people to actually do these type of things. Wait, it is talent. See, this is the whole mistake. Mm -hmm. People think that talent is something that you have to be born with. Not true. You can acquire talent. Mm -hmm. Talent is skill. So is this what motivate you, motivated you to write the talent myth? That's, That's what That's got it. me going, because I have run into this uh, in having started Mission Renaissance and teaching thousands of people over the last 25 years. The numbers of people who think they can't do this um, is about, I'd say, 9 out of 10 people, right? Now, why do they think they can't do it? Because they're sold on this myth that you have to be born with it. So mm -hmm. am I like a victim of <laughs> the talent myth? Yes, you are. <laughs> and, well. so, and so are most people, including people who basically can do it, because they, they actually think that this is something that they can do and other people can't do. And so this myth has been uh, perpetrated and it's been uh, promoted uh, for centuries mm -hmm. and centuries. Now, you're talking about victims. I mean, we're all, I guess, victims I can't sing but <laughs> you can you can really bring it out and teach people how to do no, a I lot of different so. things and you and that's what uh, the talent myth is about is telling people yes. that they don't have they don't have to think that they're like that but Look, you actually can learn Brian, Brian, can't Brian sing. people can learn people can learn look what happens to a kid who goes to school he's five or six years old he goes into a classroom there are 20 30 kids in the class this kid is one of the, let's say, 28 that his parents thought were brilliant in terms of his ability to draw and paint before he got there. And then he gets into, the, let's say, the first grade, and there's two or three talented kids. And the rest of these kids, of which this little guy is one, automatically thinks suddenly he has no ability to draw because there are these two or three that have, quote, this special talent. Now, what happens to this kid from that point on? He thinks you need a special aptitude in order to do certain things. It's devastating when mm -hmm. you think about it. And the fact is, this little kid can learn how to draw, as well as the kids who can sort of draw without having studied very much. It's, it's a learnable subject. It's learnable. developable. Yes. It's developable. There you go. And yeah, Larry, you can, yeah, can, can, develop can you how be to speak. Right. Now, Larry, I, I think a big thing has got to be heart and desire and in your head. Too. You really have, do you have to really want that? No, not any more than you want to learn how to drive a car. Really? I mean, if you, if you want to learn to drive a car, you get in the car, and uh, someone tells you this is the accelerator, and this is the steering wheel, and there's the certain things you do, and you do it, and it works. It's the same thing with drawing. Drawing is, a, is nothing more than how to see in order to put something together so it looks like something on paper. Wow. That's all it is. So if someone teaches you how to see, for instance, even before seeing, people think that when you draw, you push like you do a pencil. You pick up a pencil and you push lines on a paper. The word draw means to pull. Look it up in the dictionary. You, you know to what? Draw something so something so something when, you hold, when you hold a pencil and you start pulling it, suddenly things happen that you didn't think could happen before, but people don't know this. Yeah. 
You know what, Claudia? I was going to say to Larry here, something tells me that when you and I look at something, he sees some, something completely, completely different. different. Yes, and I have to agree with you. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was going to ask you, what, would you, what technique would you use with somebody like Brian to learn how to sing and somebody like me to learn how to draw or paint or, you know, just develop some type of yeah. artistic skill? You have to want to do it. First of all, as you said, I'm not saying people are going to learn to do something they don't care about learning to do. Mm -hmm. You have to want to learn to do it. And then you get the very fundamental skills given to you. The most fundamental of all the basics. If you've got them, you can learn to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a question of whether or not you even think you can. If you think you have to have talent and you have to be born with it, and you have that as an underlying consideration or thought, you're not going to learn. But if you can get rid of that and say, wait a minute, I'm not stupid. I've, I'm, I'm able to do this. Why can't I do that? And you apply that thinking, of course you can learn to do it. Right. If this myth is standing in the way of people learning to acquire ability that could change their lives and make them extremely happy with themselves and everything else. Being that wow. sponging, opening up your mind. And kids, again, we were talking about earlier, being so impressionable. And do you target a certain age group that uh, would be better suited for this uh, talent or, or opening up of skills? From uh, five until 85. Yeah. What happened to zero to five? Zero to five, we have to wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sometimes as young as four and a half, it depends, you know. And then do you have parents coming up to you and saying, there is no way my child will ever learn how to do anything, or my child is too gifted for this? Actually, in the, the first question, I never see parents uh, saying that, because like Larry said, most parents think their, their kids are geniuses and they're very talented. That comes m mostly in adults. Why? Because you're older, you're already been beaten down by life, and you've had a lot of losses when it comes to art and drawing. You can, uh, kids are more open. They, you give a kid a piece of charcoal or, or, or a pastel, and they start drawing. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any outreach programs? Yes, yes. We have a program called the Big Sisters, where we teach uh, kids uh, from the Big Sister programs mm -hmm. in our schools. Yeah, once a month. We have. Uh, uh, classes that we give weekly at the Children's Hospital. Yes. Is that open to anyone? Well, it's open. basically instructors from Mission Renaissance who go up there and teach the kids who are in the in hospital. The, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cancer patient, patients mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kids who uh, ha need this kind of diversion. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you mentioned that, and it's very interesting because in cancer wards, especially, uh, we're talking about pediatrics, painting, drawing, you know, fine arts in general is a good way for children to express their pain because a lot of them do not know how to just go beyond it hurts right. Well, I'm mm -hmm. not feeling well. Mm -hmm. So these fine arts are a good outlet for them mm -hmm. to express or just exactly. brighten up their day. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think this is more than just developing some type of skill. We're also talking about a therapeutic right, ability right. that they acquire with, you know, your organization coming to them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah their creativity cannot be uh, damage or ruined by any illness, basically. Now, in, in, in answer to that question, too, that you asked Jasmine, mm -hmm. you have parents who don't think they can do it, but they think their children can do it. Right. Oh, Because yeah. the parents already have been sold the bill of goods that they can't do it. The fact is, they can do it. What My whole thing with this book is to let people know that a good part of the most important part of their life is missing. And that has to do with being able to create artistically somewhere in the arts. People think they can't do this. They can do it. And this book will help them to find mm -hmm. out how they can do it. Larry, I'm going to try it. I like reading that stuff. Yes. Good. If I, if I, yeah. Maybe if I think I can, I will. <laughs> there are also some you basics your songs in here. And stuff. There are some basics in here that yes. are very fundamental to how artists go about creating art. And I think when people read this, they'll know about that. Yeah, Larry, I'm sorry we are out of time. We've got to yeah. run real quick there. But thank you very much for being here and sharing with us on that. If you'd like thank more information you, about thank Larry's you. book with the uh, talent myth, or to find out more information about the Mission, mission at Renaissance Fine Art Classes, please call the number right there. Or you can visit the website right there you see on your screen. Okay, thanks guys for being with us. Thank you so much thank for being very with very us. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, and thank you very much for joining us today on In Focus. Have a great week, and we'll see you all Monday.